Welcome everybody to episode 105 of the effing title. And this week, I have both my co-hosts. I don't know why I say it like that now. I've had you guys both here for the last couple weeks now. We got Rob, we got Jeff, Fedge. How are you guys doing? It's been a while. It's been a while, guys. It's been a it's while. Fun. We're here now. We're better than ever. You know, chilling, living the dream. Will you tell me? And you know what, um, Rob? We're going to talk some more football. I uh, only got a couple more weeks left of this stuff. Exactly. You know what? And, Rob, you know, if you don't want your shirt, don't say anything. I hate your shirt. I want it. Oh! <laughs> Love it. Oh. Love it. Love the dedication. That was so that. close as well, I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, the intro was too long. Just a little bit. Um, all right, so it's it's Pro Bowl week. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the off season so far. We're gonna give out some awards, and uh, we're gonna talk very briefly on the Pro Bowl. Are you too excited for the Pro Bowl? Nope. I don't know if uh, "excited" is the right word. Um, yeah, it's not excited at all. No, it's it's Pro Bowl. It's at least it's some football, but it's vanilla football. It's worse than uh, Pee Wee's watching out there sometimes. Um, I think I showed you that clip of. Uh, Mm -hmm. Steve Tasker back in the 90s there's just not effort like that anymore in the Pro Bowl and what are you gonna do exactly you know, you know you just it lacks it almost it reminds me of the NBA during the regular season uh, <laughs> so, I just my the thing is there, think it's like the paycheck have a good time I mean, yeah, that's kind of what it is for I mean it's yeah I mean that's, a, all, that's all that's all the game but... that's all it is now is this is it doesn't even like it like <laughs> As long as everyone comes out healthy, I mean that's really obviously everyone's goal here. Uh, you're not trying to get injuries in a, I'm gonna say a meaningless, pointless game, you know. So yeah, exactly. But. Um, all right, well let's start. Let's start it off with with the Pro Bowl, AFC versus NFC. Now, 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 for everyone at home that doesn't know, Rob has been studying this game meticulously. I have never seen someone put in so much time for a game that just frankly doesn't matter. Um, but this guy, he's dedicated. I literally don't I mean, even know who's playing. Well, he just said it's the AFC for the NFC. So. <laughs> yeah, are you sure it is? Like, <laughs> we we think we think it is. So yeah, that's what we got. Are they even playing football? Because I've seen, I saw dodgeball the other day. Yeah, that's oh, the that's dodgy. And okay, so this this is one of the ones I was talking about with Rob before we got on stream and everything. <laughs> um, Jeff, what is one? Uh, one of the old skill things or old things that you wish they would bring back. Because me and R Rob had one and I had one. Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't think they should bring any of it back because skills competition is stupid. But... <laughs> Fair. <clears throat> um, so... I, I really don't, I mean, I don't like it as a whole. It's it's pointless again, I wish that but Rob, I mean... Who can throw it the furthest? Rob, Rob said that one, the, the who can throw yeah, it the furthest. I mean, and I went with bench. Yeah. With bench? Yeah, with the bench contest. Okay, okay. I mean, those... I, I mean, I guess it gives, I, you know, kind I, of some of those, but... can't do the bench contest anymore because kids are soft and they don't lift heavy weights anymore. And that's true. I mean, let's let's be honest. The last the last couple of years, Aaron Donald wrong, Aaron Donald would have won the last couple of years just hands down without even fucking. I don't know. I bet you Quentin Nelson put up. Quite oh. A show. I don't either. Of would he bench coming out of school? Um. The Honestly, I think if anything, like, Quentin Nelson I, probably would have gone down with uh, pro workouts compared to what he was doing in college. I thought. <laughs> Quentin Nelson had 35 reps. Not bad. And terrible. You say terrible? Well, yeah, compared to the days of, like, Stephen Pay uh, Paya. Well, obviously, yeah, back to there, but, I mean, you can't say it's terrible. I mean, even, Stephen, even Stephen Paya, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't too long ago, though. I mean, Paya played in, I mean, well, never mind, it was, it was uh, 2011. He did 49 it reps. It was 2047. Yeah, no, Paya did 49. You're telling me ten years ago. At the NFL Combine, Payer recorded 49 reps in that, the highest since Justin Ernest's 51 in 1991. So you're telling me ten years ago, mm -hmm. a dude who no one, 
no normal fan has heard of. <laughs> yeah, I love how you had to reword that. If 14 more times than one of the most well-known linemen in the league. Yes. Ah, interesting. Once again, I rest my case. Aaron Donald did. Aaron, Aaron Donald did 35 coming out of college. Exactly. So him and Quentin Nelson. There's your show. Anyway. Yeah, back then though they were they were breaking uh, their chest and everything, stirring them. They were bouncing the shit out of it. Now it's all about Quentin Nelson and his form. You know, if he could bounce it off it like they did back in the day, it'd probably be the same thing. Anyways, AFC NFC. Rob, what do you want to know? What do I want to know? Yep. I, can you, I Have you ever seen the rain? I don't understand the question. AFC or NFC? Pro Bowl. Who, who's winning? That's not what you said. You said, what do I want to know? Yes, because you said that you don't even know what's going on. So I said, who do you want? What do you want to oh, know? Oh, I get it. Now. I, get it. Um, I don't want to know anything. The, the Pro Bowl is stupid. It's a waste of everyone's time. So Rob picks. Oh, yeah. sorry. I pick the refs. All right. Well, the refs are going to win the game. <laughs> Refs. We're picking a winner of this shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, who are you picking? <laughs> uh, AFC. They have better talent. AFC. They, you don't even know who the quarterback is. And I'm going not AFC, the I can fans. tell you it's not. Who's the QB for the AFC? The starter? Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty sure it's a running back. Uh, Lamar Jacks or Justin Herbert's probably starting? It's Herbert. Herbert's already been deno Lamar denoted Jackson. as the starter. Running back. Told ya. All right, so so Rob is picking the refs, Fedge is picking the AFC, and I'm picking not the fans. Um, there's who's winning, huh? Good pick, right? Not the fans. <laughs> there's our picks for the Pro Bowl. In all honesty, as you guys can tell, we don't give a fuck about the Pro Bowl. It's 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 just bad football. It always has been bad football. Now, if they did something where like it, like it was going towards a charity or Something, I don't know, then it would probably be better put an actual, like, you know, whoever wins the Pro Bowl, that team gets something, like, that conference gets something, I don't know. Make it so it actually fucking means something. Not just, hey, you get extra money at the end of the year. That's my, that's my thoughts. I agree. I, I think honestly that um, so this is the hard part is because baseball did try that whole thing with the make the Pro Bowl matter and all that. Mm -hmm. and people really didn't care that it changed. Make like, the Pro Bowl matter, he says. <laughs> well, I I mean, the other day when we were trying to figure out, hey, who the hell, who the hell actually is the home team for the Super Bowl? Yeah. I mean, Something as small as that, just put that on the line for the Pro Bowl. Like none of the like none of the people in the Super Bowl get get a say in it because they're playing their game. It's all the other teams' players. They get a choice, yeah. have an impact on yeah. who's going to choose. Because, like we say, in overtime that matters. So, who wants to actually get to choose the coin toss? You know, do know. like like something like that, or you know, like I mean, and, and I don't think you could do it, but I mean. Give every team in the if the AFC wins, give every team in the AFC a call, a final comp pick at the end of the draft, or you know, like just something something to make it fucking like, because it's one of those things where you see guys running routes and they're like the half ass running routes, and it's like fucking fifty to seventy, <laughs> and it's like you know, defensive players are only playing when like you know they're obviously but inside. Honestly, what what pro or what uh, all star game do you see that it's not like that? Oh, of course. I mean, give I just me, it, give me an All Star game that's not. I'm just saying it's it's everything. I, mean, I, I can't I, I really. Would, I would honestly say baseball's All Star game isn't like that. Baseball's even also... baseball games. I mean, All Star can get up there. I mean, yeah, they're playing defense. They're you know pitching. I mean, obviously you're going against the best pitcher, so I feel like it's a little different. Where baseball is kind of a single sport, single person sport, I guess yeah, if you will. Where if you have a lockdown pitcher, games, than it is. you know. Mm -hmm. But 
I just, I mean, look at basketball. Basketball, what are the scores? 180? To, like, those are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that one is always – I've always hated that one anyway just because, like, they literally don't play defense. They might, like, they might as well, like, they might as well just, like, have the, like, the defense come off the court and just let the offense try to do whatever crazy shit they want and then just give the ball to the other team and then they come off the court and just do it back and forth and just see who does the crazier shit. Yeah. I, I'm not, I, I also don't, I'm not a huge, uh, basketball fan, so, um. <laughs> You're not? I just, I, I think. I think the big problem is that they've started they they've gone to this thing where they don't care about the game itself but they care more about the week up leading up to the game. Yes, 100%. Like why do I care about the sp- I don't care about the skills competition like uh, oh, oh, oh no, they're playing <laughs> dodgeball. Rob, do you do you care who who wins the dodgeball game between the pro I'm athletes? Not, I'm talking like, about the NFL. I'm talking about all of the All Star games. The only one that doesn't is baseball, and I don't even really like baseball in because I think they've ruined that sport. But um, I mean, you don't think the home run derby is awesome? Come on, I do, but that's the only event they do. They don't do any other one. It'd be it'd be almost like as if the if the NFL did only the fucking uh, QB longest distance throw. No, you know what the NFL should do? Forget Nothing. The event. If they're gonna if they're gonna go this route, the NFL should be made it simple. Hey, rather than doing a game, do seven on seven. The linemen go through enough beating as it is, and if they really want to do something, let them go do one on ones. Or <laughs> really, or I mean, honestly, you know what though? Just You're just have them have have the have the skill players do seven on seven, then have the line do seven on seven. Fuck it. I mean, anyway, that's really what you're doing. Either way, I mean, that's it is a skills but, competition yeah. as far as that the whole time. I mean, it's just but I'm saying, you're playing you, vanilla defenses with no blitzing and just yeah, yeah. You know. Do seven on seven for all the skill players, and then on the offensive line, I would tell the old line, let's go one on one because you guys are gonna try because you don't want to lose. As it, yeah. The more or better yet, have corners and receivers go one on one. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I'd rather see that than the. Pro- mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. But who I know we can't do it because, but who wouldn't want to see uh, Devontae Adams against Jalen Ramsey one on one? Trayvon Diggs versus fucking Stephon Diggs. <laughs> That'd be funny. Kind of funny yeah. Right, like it is, you know, do those? Yeah, like I, hundred percent agree. I would rather it, see that shit. The then the receiver gets the pick. Which QB wants to throw to him? Which QB? Like, yeah. It's not Josh, Josh Allen. They're wrong. <laughs> no, but I, for the pro, like, I think the Pro Bowl is stupid. Like the Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowl should be. When did you like? If you played in the NFL and your teammates want you there, go ahead, go show up at the Pro Bowl. The All Pro team should be what decides if you make money or not. Mm. Oh yeah. Take yeah. the all pro team, guess what? You're not that good. The all pro team's actually voted by people who know what the hell they're talking about. Kind of. But you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, I, think that'd be, that'd be oh, a, I know what you're saying, man. I know what you're saying. That'd be a lot more entertaining than watching the shit show of literally defensive ends and literally stopping they they stop playing. <laughs> so that they don't sack the quarterback and hurt them. Fire, for the the fire off to the oh the first move didn't work and what was the first move it was the triple spin. <laughs> oh never mind, didn't work. Hey, don't get me wrong, I love a good triple spin, but <laughs> there we go. They just the Pro Bowl needs like they just the whole thing needs to be fucking yeah, scrapped I mean, and just, don't get me wrong. The Pro Bowl and not, getting people more involved. I mean that's. Pro Bowl a lot of sport problems but yes but we talk football here so we yeah yeah so it's the pro bowl whoa, whoa, whoa. we were talking about football this whole time <laughs> <laughs> jeff, needs to re- jeff needs to reconsider his picks now um all right so now let's now let's move on then to um better discussions best quarterback this past season the best qb this past season best jeff, qb oh, oh. this past season the best QB this past season. Yes. For 
either side. It, the it's entire NFL. The entire NFL, huh? We're not doing we're not doing the bullshit where it's like, oh, they were ninety nine last year, so we're gonna make them a ninety eight. No, no, no. Who was the best this year? Period. Who do you think? Let me rephrase it like that. Who do you think was the best QB this past season? I mean, that's the thing. I I think the problem is there's there was a lot of them this year. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like they each had their ups and downs throughout the year. I feel like um, I mean you could make the argument at the beginning of the year where. Lamar Jackson was throwing for 300 and running for 100 that you can make the argument he was the best. Joe, Justin Herbert showed it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Mahomes had his little stretch. Aaron Rodgers, I mean, I think he – I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be a lot of people's pick for best of the year, but I don't think that he was. Um, I still think that, you know, he's an efficient quarterback and a good offense. Um, I mean, just look at his stats compared to everyone else, but – uh, I mean, you can make it, you know, thing for Tom Brady too during, you know, I'm going to say the majority of the year for him. So that's why I'm going to go with Tom uh, because it was most consistent throughout the you know, entirety of the year. Um, where the other ones I feel like were more of like a four, six, eight game stretch okay. um, where they could put it together. But that's my thoughts. But right. what do I know? I mean, if we're being honest. I think the best quarterback this year was Jameis Winston. His season just got cut short. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like we can like literally like this was like the year because I know me and Jeff talked about. It. I don't know if Rob, if me and you did or not, but me and Jeff, I know did when Manning got injured in Indianapolis, and I said Manning should be MVP. Yeah, I mean, I look, I, I look at when I, you say best quarterback, it's really easy, like. But I, I look more at saying who, if he wasn't on there. Well, yeah, team, exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Like that's what I'm saying. It for us, for like you would know. They, like if he if he wasn't on their team, would they be even close to what they were? Who are you replacing so, them with? Yeah, I'm just saying. If you replace them with an average quarterback, yeah. would they be anything close? So in my mind, when I ask that question, there's only. I would honestly say only three QBs that come to mind. And for me, that's Josh Allen, that's Joe Burrows, and that's honestly, I don't know if you even can consider them good, though. That's the problem. Is I, I, I'd say um, Carr with the Raiders. Mm-hmm. And I so based off that logic, I mean the Raiders won because they weren't that great to begin with. I guess you can take them out. So now it's Josh Allen or Joe Burrow, and I think both of them. I think Joe Burrow had more of a run game than Josh Allen did. So if you take, I think they're both great players, but I'd probably say Josh Allen was the best quarterback because he was also a running back in many games this year. So. Yeah, that's a job. Interesting. I'm gonna go with uh, a name neither one of you said. I'm gonna go with Matthew Stafford. I see the reason. Yeah, I, I don't Stafford think Matthew is, Stafford because was there two years ago with them. I was gonna say, yeah, I think he's a better quarterback than Stafford. I mean, he's a better quarterback than Goff, but I mean, was so, he really what won a couple more games of the playoffs? That's I mean, so it's that's, 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 it's that, not better uh, offense uh, with Odell. Uh, it, you know what I mean? So, I'm just um, from for me is the fact that like he did he did this in Detroit, and they weren't winning. He's come over and he's done the exact same thing, and now they're and like this team's winning. Yes, they have better uh, so Matt Stafford weapons was the MVP last year. Then, but the bottom line is you put a mediocre person in that offense in Jared Goff, and he That's still had the same results except in the playoffs. The, you're saying except in the playoffs, he Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl one time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this past uh, the past year, whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but that was what two years ago. Not this past year. I was comparing to. Yeah, but no, I agree. I mean, that's the thing is though. 
you know, so it's just that's why I don't give Stafford the nod. I think he's a great quarterback, and I think mm. he's good for the offense. But you can almost argue that Stafford has more weapons, um, you know, this year with especially with Odell coming back after the fact, yeah. and it's just fair. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's you know, like back to the point with Rob was making, and that's why I. I'd have to agree with him and Josh when you look at it that way. I think Josh probably is more so than Tom Brady because I think Tampa's defense could have won a lot of games for him, not to mention that he had a great running game, um, I mean, I, which could keep an average average quarterback in the game more often. Yeah, um, with those tight ends down in Tampa Bay too, that when you, yeah. have, when you have a lot of good tight ends, a lot of it's pretty – most average and a pretty solid yeah. offensive line, honestly. You know? Oh yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? We've it's always that one talks about with like either rookie quarterbacks or new quarterbacks, where it's like this their safety valve. We, how many times do we fucking hear that every year? The safety valve being the tight end. Well, in Tampa, you have fucking some of the best. Period, <laughs> right? It's honestly why I was leaning Joe Burrows because he has a horrendous offensive line. Yeah. But he all, but he does have some very good weapons in terms of, and I honestly think, in my opinion, other people will say I'm crazy, but I think the Bengals have more weapons than the Bills have when it comes to totality. Not, I think Stephon Diggs is better than any player on the Bengals, but I think. I mean, it depends also what you're looking at. I mean, as far as Chase goes. Chase. But I'm I saying think. Chase and Diggs are good at their own skill set, though. Like, Diggs is going to get you, but, I mean, Chase is going to take off top of any defense. I don't care who you're yeah. playing against. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's still, you know, I would take Chase over Diggs in certain situations, honestly. Um, but Diggs is going to, you know, that guy that can go for you know, 10, 12 catches a game and just his route running is impeccable, obviously, you know, just as far as that side of things. So it's – but – what does his chest have to do with his route running? His what? His chest. You said it's impeccable. Oh, you're, you're ridiculous. I was like, um, what the fuck did I say? Now chest? Moving, on, now moving on to the. <laughs> I was trying to go back to it. I'm like, ah. Uh... Moving on to the to the to the to the it's running awful. boys. Now we got the best running backs, or the be- who is the best running back? This one, I feel like it's a no brainer. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can go against Lamar Jackson. Look what he did <laughs> after he got hurt and before he got hurt. There's, there's no question he's the best running back in the league. Look at that. Oh, shit. And you laugh, but you're like, it's got a point. It's got a point. <laughs> it's got a point. <laughs> no, seriously, though. I mean, can you really go against uh, Jonathan Taylor? I mean, the thing is, you you brought in Wentz to, you know, take off the the stress and the, you know, 10, 12 man boxes. This guy said, yes, I said 12 because they were putting every one of their mother in the box. Well, I, mean, still I was, was going to say, I'm pretty like, sure, I'm pretty sure just, there were some teams that did do 12 against them. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what made Jonathan Taylor good, you know. You know you're, he's running the ball, and you still can't. Stop. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's that it's the adage um, of you know, it's like we're gonna force this guy to throw, and that's what they tried to do, and they just said fuck you. We're just gonna keep running the ball at you. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and this this goes back to my point. Sorry, just real quick, back to these running backs and MVP talk mm-hmm. here, real quick. I, I don't. Have a chance for you guys. I don't know how you can go against, uh, like the argument of Derrick Henry because. Like my issue with him is is that they kept winning without him. You know, I mean that's just them. You know, we have a game plan and everything, and that's why I just you know wouldn't put him up in the MVP conversation as a lot of people did because you saw him winning without it. But that was my talk there. And Rob, who are you gonna go with? Because I was actually pointing with the idea of going with uh, Damian Harris. No, I actually like a lot personally, but that's just my idea. I would never say he's the best running back because of health. Can't stay healthy. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So you yeah, can never see him over yes. an entire season, but yeah. when he is healthy for stretches, he does have very good three, four, five game stretches. Mm. Yeah. Um, but no, I was gonna go. Honestly, he doesn't have the same yards. He only played in one less game, but the same thing. Joe Mixon, the dude. Does, yeah. no, see, Jonathan Taylor has the best offensive line in the game, and it's not even close. Mixon has Noah. <laughs> Joe Mixon, I he has 
the reason you know that his offensive line is because people yell at them so much. Yeah. And they go, what are you doing? <laughs> you idiots. Well, my only thing with that is is that he has a phenomenal a pass game to back it up, though. He does. But if Jonathan uh, Taylor had that pass game, I would argue he puts up more yards than Joe Mixon. So this is the balance that you have. What's more important, having a great offensive line or having a great passing attack with you? And I mean, oh, and that's that's well, what yeah, that's what you find out. If you so, switch places with them, you know yeah. what I mean? So I, I sit there and I lean the other way with it. Um, and the really the only reason being is just um, strictly because. I, I saw a lot of Taylor this year in games, so I, I kind of saw where what would make him struggle. I didn't see enough of Mixon, honestly, to kind of make this opinion, but I am. But it seems when – He only missed one game this year, though? Yeah, it says, it says games played 16. He had, I feel like he missed more he had, than that. That's weird. He had 40 less rushes, and he ran for 1,200 yards, yeah. uh, had 13 touchdowns. Lost one fumble. What was it? What was his receiving um, stats like? Because I feel like he, I feel like he got a lot of catches out of the backfield too. Uh, oh, I could see. be, I could be a hundred percent wrong with that, but I, I feel like I, I. Saw... Joe Mixon had uh, forty-two catches. Yeah, and damn. Three hundred fourteen yards, three touchdowns, long of fifty-two. His one fumble on the year was actually off of a catch. <laughs> oh awesome. really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, looking at it here, I, I would. From what what I was saying is that I. It seemed when the when the Bengals needed to run the ball, Joe Mixon was able to convert. And again, I haven't seen enough Bengals games this year. I've only watched three yeah. of them. But in all three games, they were close games, and when they needed him, mm-hmm. he converted easily. No issues at, no problems or anything like that. But Behind, in the other end, in a lot of those games that I watched with the Colts, when Taylor, when the Colts needed Taylor, he didn't always come through. A lot of those, a lot of those yards. I mean, I'll use the Bills game as an example. Sweet dude, you ran for two hundred and whatever yards. Like one hundred and eighty of them came when your team was up by three touchdowns in the second half. Like what? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Oh, great! You ran for one sixty against the Pats. Uh, I was honestly that was just my most impressive on the last carry of the game. Like I was gonna say, that was my most impressive rush for him though. Is you guys knew you had to stop it. You know, you lined up yeah. in the box and still did. That's I mean, that's impressive right there. But it again, is, but it goes back to they also that, have a great offensive line. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think the stats are very misleading. And yeah. like I'm, Derrick Henry and Adrian. Peterson? I do. I agree. The, the higher your okay. volume is and the more your scheme relies around it, the better numbers you're going to have. That's yeah. obvious. I mean, the, the better numbers you should have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't have better numbers, there's other questions you have to ask. A lot of follow-up questions if your numbers suck. Mm. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, fair. Fair. Um, best wide receiver. This one's this one's honestly hard for me just because it depends on what you're looking for. But I, I'm going to lean towards the, and it's in my opinion no secret to what a lot of people say, and that's Devonte Adams for me, mm. um, just because I think he can do it all. Um, but like I said, it really depends on what you want to do. Which you know you want speed on the edge, you just want you know sure handed guy. You want a combination of both. Like you know it's. It, it, it can go a lot of ways, in my opinion. So I, I don't. I'm not going to say there's not a wrong answer, but there's a lot of right answers. I feel like for this one. Yeah, I, I, I like just looking yeah. at looking at the numbers here. That like it's one of those things where like this is one of those ones, kind of like what with quarterback. You can make an argument for one, two, three, four, five, six. I was going to say I think there's four names on this category. <clears throat> I think it's Chase Cooper Cup. Devonte Adams and uh, Jefferson Stephon, and Stephon Diggs. In my oh, um, who was the name you said? Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah, see that that doesn't uh, doesn't do anything for me. That's my <laughs> I would say those are all yes, phenomenal names in mm-hmm. my opinion. And honestly, yeah. I would even throw uh, Chris Godwin in there as well. You could, but uh, 
season was cut short. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And I, that, no, here's... That's another one. But it's just you know, like you said, those are all great receivers, but all varying skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why it's hard to pick one receiver. In my opinion. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just yeah, doing I'm just doing one just because it makes it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, how about um just throw gonna do one? I'm gonna do Cooper Cup just because I think he's the best overall. It's either him or Adams who are the best overall receivers. They can do a little bit of everything. Um, I'm gonna throw this. N- but yeah, I'm gonna throw this That's name out there just for the hell of it. What about Debo Samuel? Uh, running back. I mean, if you're gonna go with Debo Samuel, you got to go with Cordell Cordero Patterson too. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're very similar skill sets. And I, well, I so I'm I'm going off of it just because I'm looking. I have my I have the uh, receiving stats as yards right now, and uh, yeah. Debo had 1,400 yards. Uh receiving. Yes. Yeah, I mean that's product of their situation, in my opinion. But oh, of course, I'm just I'm just like I said, that's that's the only reason why I brought it up because and like I know there's been a lot of talk, especially after that uh, playoff game. With how like with how much he did, um, and the amount that they do with him, you know what I mean? Um, you yeah, know, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with uh, Fedge with uh, Devonta Adams. I like Cup, but I, there's less. I like Cup because I just like the offense. Because you like the what? I like the offense that he's in. Cooper and I Cup. Think we're- that offense, so. I just I love the I love the interview that he did where he's just like yeah they did this so I just did this and you know it's like this and yeah. <laughs> but he just talks at such a higher level though like oh yes <laughs> and that's funny um but yeah no, I'm going with Adams just Adam like it's to be a one double A player and get all the way up oh, to yeah. that level oh exactly yeah he has to have that yep all right so best tight end final final of the bests. S tight end. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll, I'll start this off. I'm gonna, of course. I'm gonna go with the Baltimore. I'm gonna go with Mark Andrews. Yeah, he had a really big impact on the team. Uh, I mean, he was the only consistent thing we had on the team, Rob. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> he had a real big impact on the team. I mean, again, I think this also is, you know, it depends on what you're looking for a tight end. Okay, so he blocked, he blocked, he had 107 yards, 107 catches, and he had 1,300 yards. He was the only dependable thing we had. You want the Travis Kelsey, you want the, you know, like, it's just, you want the straight line speed of Kyle Pitts, you know, I just. Are they even considered tight ends? Kyle is Kyle. Exactly. You're the tight end. Yeah, I mean. I I think in my opinion I like you know combination of both. I think it's between and I'm gonna pick the you on know, the running teams. Um, I think it's between George Kittle and Mark Andrews. Those are my two top guys. I also am in love with Darren Waller, but again as we've said, his season was cut short, missed a couple games here and there, so we're not gonna consider him this year. So <laughs> I like uh, Kittle or, or uh, Mark Andrews in my opinion. See, I don't I don't really like the Kittle thing. I think Kittle has actually gone downhill the last few years. I think a lot of it has to do with injuries. But I just when I watch him play every game I've watched the 49ers maybe I just pick the shitty games to watch but I don't like he just doesn't. Was Jimmy, was Jimmy Grapple a quarterback? Were you watching Kyle uh, use check more? Won. Then it probably was a shitty game to watch. I think he may have been oh, watching use check more. <laughs> he's so juice and he's like oh, juice and just they Kittle's just gone. Use like I, I, I never see him use it. Like, um, that's so true, and that's the weird thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's one of those. Is he not getting open as much as he used to, or what's going on? And I can, I can see that side for you. I, I can support you. So I mean, honestly, yours, then? When it comes to tight ends, like, there's no. I, I don't know if I'd say anything. I think you. There's five that you could pick from, and. I mean, I don't consider Kelsey or Pitts tight ends before we begin because they don't block, so they're not tight ends to me. Um, but if you want to say someone, I think Mark Andrews, Knox from Buffalo. What's the dude's name in Dallas? I don't remember his name. Um, uh, Schultz, Dalton Schultz. 
yeah, you could say him. He had a really good year. I'd even say Hunter Henry. He was a red red zone. That's machine. true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And obviously uh, blocked in a. And also with him coming back season. from, uh, he came back from injury, didn't he? Yeah, he used to get injured every year, yeah. and he played all seventeen games. So, um, yeah, you can go with any of them. Honestly, I don't. I don't think there was any like tight end this year that was just like dominant though. There were really good ones, but I don't think there was any like you know years past you sat there and been like oh shit that's the best oh yeah player. years past like you the said you, have, you have the Kittle and yeah you know Travis Kelsey as far as stats wise go but yeah I mean even I mean you got, I think you got to go Mark Andrews if you're looking at that you know I mean he's been the most consistent over time and I just I'm going Mark Andrews. <laughs> That's fair. No. You talked me into it, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> to be fair with Mark Andrews, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Lamar Jackson is his quarterback. He was targeted 154 times. He only caught 107 of them. How, how many of them? 154. Yeah, and how many did he catch? 107. You know why? Because Lamar Jackson can't throw. Because Lamar... Lamar Jacks can't throw. I mean, that's what you just you just made your own point. <laughs> I know. But that's why I said that. He's fair. I didn't realize his numbers were this good. Actually, I'm definitely going Mark Andrews. I had no idea his stats. Yeah, no, li- literally, Mark Mark was the only Bryce Ball that we had yeah. as the season went on. He broke the receiving like receptions and receiving yards record for Baltimore. Like he owns both of those now. Only yeah, good just thing. Just because you own both those doesn't make you really. Good. Of course, it, like, whatever. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah, but like that, like that, like is like just that. That being the only good thing that was like happening as this as that nightmare stretch was going on, where no Lamar yeah. and Huntley, it was just kind of one of those nice ones where it's like, thank God he's doing well because we just signed him to a big extension too. <laughs> Love it. He was targeted the most of any tight end in the regular season by twenty targets. Hmm? Was Kelsey next? Yeah. And, and the yeah. fact that he can get targeted that much and be a huge factor in the run game, I think that's what makes it even better. And he had 15 more catches than Kelsey, who was the next highest. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, this isn't even close. Nice, yeah. I like it. Mark Andrews, nice. All right. All right. Um, anything else off-season-wise that we want to talk about, we want to hit on? Absolutely not. <laughs> just, I just want one more topic for all of you guys, and we can put it out there, and then we can end this piece. Right. Uh, who is your favorite hiring of the offseason so far? Fire. Be at, at fire. Hiring, <laughs> any, any I, I like the I like Rob's version of who is your favorite firing. <laughs> but it can be any. It can be head coach, OC. It can be um, position coach if you want to. I don't care. I just want to know what's your favorite. Honestly, and it doesn't. I guess it doesn't have to be your favorite. It's just most intriguing for you. I can give. I mean, I can give a most intriguing and a my favorite. Oh, we got. So just looking here, um, my favorite right now is uh Mike McDonald coming to back coming back to Baltimore to be the DC. He was previously a part of the staff. Um. In Baltimore, so he knows the system. He knows everything. Had a good year with Michigan um, as the DC. So is I'm he intrigued. Choosing his own team. Yes, is I am. A homer job um, but the most intriguing one to me, though, is the fact that the fucking Carolina Panthers hired Ben McAdoo to be their offensive coordinator. I love it. Good old Benny. Benny boy. That's my fa- that's my kind of most intriguing kind of like <laughs> one out of all of them. And yes, I did do a homer job. Um, I that's a tough one. I'm intrigued to see what Brian Dable does with the Giants, um, mainly because now he doesn't have an athletic quarterback. I don't care what anyone says. Daniel Jones is not an athletic quarterback. Uh, I'm gonna disagree. I mean, he's an athletic quarterback, but he's not. 
you can Did you see it? Do you want to, do you want me to show you that clip again where he fell on his face after running ten yards? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my laughs> um, but I, I am I'm curious to see. I'm also curious to see if he's going to stay calling plays, or if he's going to give that up. Um, but the other one I'm interested, the one I'm most intrigued about so far is I'm very intrigued to see if McDaniels has learned anything or if he's going to change his approach or if he's going to do exactly what he did with Denver with the Raiders. Um, Because if he tries to be like that again, that's going to be a disaster real fast. (laughs) But if he doesn't, if he's, if he's learned and, is cool with not calling plays and things like that. I think he could be very successful as a head coach. All right. All right. I am going with the Chicago Burrs. Oh, the Burrs. As a group package, and I still don't know what I want out of it, but it's more of I like Eberflus as a uh, coordinator, and I want to see what it translates into. Um, I think it's obviously going to depend on who he brings in to work with Fields. Um, but that's the one I'm most intrigued with. Um, that's what I got, guys. Can I say my, my worst one? Yeah. Your, your worst hiring or firing? Worst hiring. Oh, what do you got? <laughs> I got a tie. Josh McDaniels? No. And Doug, Doug Peterson. P- Doug, Doug Peterson. Peterson. And the Cowboys' decision to re-sign Dan Quinn as their defense coordinator. Ooh. Why? Uh, Dan Quinn's notorious for the longer he's with the program, the worse it gets. Yeah, but I mean, look what they did to that defense. I mean, I don't. There's no, 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 no. I no, bet no. you nothing you couldn't find a what? people forget about this in the NFL. That had nothing to do with coaching. That had have that had everything to do with the fact that the last two years they've spent almost every draft pick on defense. <laughs> Factual, I know, I agree. So I, I agree. I I'm just saying, I it's people just... that are like, "Oh, it's Dan Quinn's defense." No, it's not. It's not Dan Quinn's defense. I I agree with you. Yes, I'm just saying that I would be hard pressed to find any Cowboys fan that would be against that. All right, I just I, I can rephrase it. Dan Quinn's an idiot for re-signing with the Cowboys. <laughs> Okay. All right. Fair, fair enough. I take fair. it. And on that note, <laughs> um, last the last one I just want to throw out there just because I find it interesting. Um, Heinz Ward has completed an interview with the Houston Texans to be their next head coach. Um, thank you guys for stopping. Thank you guys for uh, uh, joining Why? today and being a part of this. I don't. Rooney rule. I mean, same same with Josh McCowan. Josh McCowan has completed his second interview. Um, yeah. What are the Texans doing? <laughs> uh, next week, we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl, and we're going to break that motherfucker down. Um, let us know what you guys yeah, think are. of the offseason, your best positionals, all these things in the comments down below, whether you guys like the Pro Bowl or not. And as always, depending on where you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Still trouble, stay safe. We will talk to you all later. Not even the players like the Pro Bowl. Bye.